Hello and welcome back to the Johnny Lee Memorial League Base on Balls podcast here for week number six. I'm your host, John Height, and today I'll be joined by the commission, Cody, Bracton, and Paul. Cody, we'll start with you. I mean, it was an exciting week. What? How are you feeling right now? A lot of emotions right now. I, I really thought I was going to lose this week. Um, thank God for Cedric Mullins' cycle. Without that, I do lose. But, you know, Bry's got a good team. Bry throws the kitchen sink at you. It is a stressful, stressful week when you're playing that guy. Um, you know, seeing you, John Height, put up 900 points, a little intimidating. But, hey, my, my team did not play anywhere close to the best, and I come out with a win against an undefeated team. So I, I got to be happy. Yeah, I'm going to echo what you said about my team and just the way it is, that good teams find a way to win, and that's all that matters. You got the W, and you're still undefeated. Bracton, how are you? Uh, not great, not going to lie. I'm not not, not <laughs> yes. happy, man. That's I, honest. I mean, no, I mean, what am I going to say? Last in hitting points in the entire league by a wide margin. Uh, middle of the pack pitching-wise. 11th overall league scoring. There's not a lot to be happy oh. about this week. So congrats to Tita. He's a baller. Still undefeated. But uh, there's there's some stuff I got to work on for sure. My minor setback for major comeback. Paul, how are you? I'm doing all right. Uh, my matchup was an absolute shit show. But uh, just looking around the league, I kind of feel like it was sort of a ho-hum week, you know, the teams that were supposed to win won, and um, the teams that were kind of were supposed to lose lost. Um, so no real surprises, but a good week overall. Definitely was. And let's start with your matchup, Paul. So Norfolk Tides took on the Amarillo Shad Poodles and Connor. Paul squeaked out the win, 440 to 419. Paul, you'll have the first word. Um, just take us through your thought process throughout the whole week, and did you feel like you were in danger of losing at any point? I felt like I was in danger of losing probably until about two or three hours ago. <laughs> um, obviously, as you can see, a very low-scoring match. Um, you know, bats were my saving grace, 301 points for my bats. Uh, my arm's just absolutely terrible, 139 points. Um, from my relief pitching, I net one point. Uh, 17 between Grouderall and Pearson, negative 16 from Rizal Iglesias. So that's not great. Um, but overall, you know, I'm not pleased, but we got the win. Wins are what matters around here. Um, as for Connor, he has a good team. He's made, he made a few moves this week. I think that short term will hurt him, but I think long term, and that's what he's looking at, uh, I think will benefit him. Definitely. Uh, Bracton, what did you think of this one? Um, yeah, I've been saying it a little bit about how we've been looking at some players kind of popping off on these teams that um, aren't, aren't necessarily near the top. And we noticed that, that Connor did make a couple trades, like uh, he shipped Tony Gonsolin to Bry after a solid uh, six-inning start for him. Yeah, appreciate um, that, Connor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Traded for Ken Waldachuk for me, and then traded him to somebody else, I think, Smell. But uh, not much to say here. I mean, Connor had the lowest overall points in the league this week and only finished above me hitting-wise. So uh, I'm not too thrilled with that. But um, Paul had some good performances. Adley Rutschman, 47. Carlos Correa, 41. Estuary Ruiz continues to ball. So, like you all said, wins are wins. And uh, congrats to Paul for, I believe, what, that's two in a row? Or three in a row? That's no. Cool. What? You, you beat... I lost by two points last week. Oh, shit. Yeah, I forgot about that. Well, then you beat me, lost by two, and then you beat, you won again. So, that's a good good three three week stretch in my eyes compared to getting screwed like me. So that's good. Yeah, definitely. And Cody, what do you have to say? Yeah, you know, uh, for Paul, he, he, this has honestly got to be pretty refreshing. I mean, his team played like absolute crap, and he comes out with a W, and he goes into the next week at five hundred. You know that that that's beautiful when you can, you know, just completely. And Paul knows this. I'm not. I'm not bagging on his team here. He laid an egg this week, 
but he come out with a W. Uh, that's all that matters. You know, the bats, the bats played well. The bats played, you know, 300 plus points. That, that hangs with anybody in the league. The arms was a big drop off. That arms are volatile. That's what's going to happen. Uh, that's what happened to my team this week. Arms just was lackluster. Uh, for Connor, you know, Connor was rolling in with some, I think he had what, two 600 plus point weeks in a row. Um, you know, he, his team definitely cooled off this week. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see. He's making a lot of moves. Uh, Paul mentioned kind of, you know, probably going to help him more long term than short term. Um, that's probably where his focus is going at this point in the season, where his record is. But for Paul, hey, you're at 500, clean slate. You know, it all, it all starts back at zero from here, and uh, we'll see where he goes, you know, moving forward. Yeah, definitely. I mean, a win is a win. That's all that really matters. Uh, I mean, you're able to squeak it out. I mean, one guy I want to shout out for you, Paul, is Estuary Ruiz, which I know he a little bit. He had a great week. I've been following him a lot since he's been moved uh, quite a bit. Definitely an impressive performance out of him. I'm um, Just overall, I mean, you're able to get the win, so that's all that matters. And Connor, tough break, but again, we've seen his team pop off already a couple of times throughout the season. Had a little bit of bad luck, so the good luck's got to turn around eventually. All right, so let's head to, I guess, the quote-unquote matchup of the week. Cody versus Bry. So Bowling Green was able to secure the win, 661 to 637 over the Rocky Mountain Vibes. Cody, I'll let you go first. I've been looking forward to hear what you have to say. <laughs> what a week. What a week. I, uh, you know, there was points in the week where I felt pretty confident. Uh, I felt super confident. I think it was Friday night when Cedric Mullins hit for the cycle. Uh, and I, I think my lead jumped up to almost 200 points. And then things just went downhill from there. I did not do much on Saturday and Sunday. Let's see, combined on the weekend, I put up uh, 140 points, so 70 points a day, and he put up 177. He put up 280 points over the weekend. So, uh, you know, he, he got it close. Listen, Bry throws everything at you, man. I mean, he threw the absolute kitchen sink at me. I was trying to counter it all week. I, I held on just enough uh, to get the W. Uh, that was a division matchup. That was a big matchup. I'm going to have to play him again. Um, but, you know, I, I'm, I'll take this win, and we'll we'll go into next week feeling good. And, uh, Paul, what do you have to say about this one? Yeah, I mean, I so on last podcast, I predicted over-under for Cody this week would be 700, and that if he went under, that he might be in trouble. And he went under. You know, he still pulled out a win, you know, a 24-point win. Um, you know, congrats to Cody. He's, I think he gave this match up two or three times in the last 24 hours, but still pulls it out. Uh, as for Bry, you know, he's doing, uh, you know, streaming, adding, dropping. It wasn't enough to take down the top team this week, but man, did he get close. Um, you know, he's got some injury problems, I think. You know, Kepler got hurt this week. Elvis Andres is on the IL. Um, but, you know, Bry, he'll, he'll add, drop, trade, do whatever he's got to do to stay at the top. I think he will stay at the top. Um, he's not going to be a team that's just going to lie down for anybody. Uh, you know, 300 points from his bats, 300 from his arms. It's a balanced team that is going to go far. Definitely. Well, and Bracken, you got the last word. I'll echo that. I've been preaching up Bry's team for the entire like podcast series that we've been doing. I love what he's doing. Uh, he what he did almost took down Cody, not quite uh, so close. I noticed uh, what do you call it? Ten point different in pitching exactly in Cody's favor, and uh, fourteen points in hitting. It's it's crazy. They came down to that that small margins in both. Uh, both categories so good good week for both but uh cody congrats on pulling out the win and that's it was fun to watch just going back and forth it was good it definitely was and the thing i'll add about this one in terms of cody's team is just there were a couple of guys that usually are completely outstanding for cody i think kind of let him down this week i know shane mcclanahan only had one point i think against uh i think his second start of the week against i think it was against the yankees but i know marcus stroman uh, stroman had an off week 
Uh, Dylan Cease, obviously, has been an issue throughout the season. And even um, like a guy like Austin Riley, who's been kind of underperforming so far this season. It's only a matter of time before these dudes especially, um, not so much McClanahan, but more of the other guys, that they're just going to pop off. And when Cody's team's already shown they could score 800-plus points in a given week, um, you know, anything can happen. So, again, good teams find a way to secure wins, and that's exactly what happened. And shout-out, Bry. Bry, I'm terrified to play you next week. Um, there's so many guys on this team, you know, definitely I need to worry about. I know James Altman, a guy that I trade away to, to, to Bry the second he joined the league, he's going to go for like 50 or something. And just, you know, the amount of arms he has and a lot of variability with these arms. I mean, Hunter Green only had four this week. That guy could put up, you know, 40, 50 points in a start with the amount of strikeouts he throws. And Cal Quantrill, a guy who I traded for throughout the week and ended up flipping him again, I'm sure he'll pop off next week. So, the long story short, I'm excited to play you next week, Bry. But let's head to another matchup. Let's do Bracton versus Tita. Because outside of Cody versus Bry, I think this is probably the matchup to watch for the week. Um, so Tita pulled off an impressive victory. He remains undefeated. He won 680 to 477. So the Bismarck Larks got the loss. Bracton, you'll get the first word. Uh, just tell me what you thought about your team's performance as a whole. Yeah, I knew this was over by like Wednesday or Thursday. Um, that was honestly disappointing because I thought it was gonna, we were gonna drag it out a little longer. Maybe be pretty close heading into today. Maybe I'd be down by thirty or forty, but obviously that wasn't the case. Um, I'm not extremely disappointed with the way the pitching went. Uh, seventh in the league is is exactly middle of the pack, only separated by uh, behind Jamie by three. So not hugely disappointed. The bats, though, finished last in the league with 217. That's unacceptable. And uh, just, I'm at a loss for words. Tita, Tita did great. 46 points from Yandy Diaz, 34 from Wilson Contreras. And it seemed like every day Christian Yelich had a home run against me. He's three home runs and nine RBIs, 17 at bats this week, 75 points. Can't write that. I mean, just did outstanding. 41 points, John Gray, 58 points from Rivaldi. Like, just Tita did great. And there's not much else for me to say on this other than I got to do some work. That's That's all. Paul, you're up next. Yeah, Braxton's team first. Uh, looking at his totals, you know, 217 points from his bats is pretty below average for a team that can and should compete. You know, he had his team had two home runs and had two stolen bases all week. That's those are tough numbers to put up over seven days. Uh, his arms were there. I thought, you know, 260 out of his arms. It's it's not you know elite level, but it's production enough get wins around here um but the big story here is Bracton's or um tita's team um he he went crazy you know his bats crazy 319 uh brent rooker i know that that was that's the free agent edition of the year i think um evaldi he's been solid too you know 58 points almost had a complete game shut out this week um but you know tita we all know tita's this team isn't going to be what it's going to be next week, probably. Uh, but he still just amazes me how great he's been with, you know, making trades seemingly every other hour. And his team doesn't drop off in, in production level. So congrats to Tita. He is a force. He's going to be there at the end of the year. Definitely. Tita has been a scary player in this league, Cody. You have the last word. Yeah, I don't think anybody's sleeping on Tita anymore. I mean, this team's legit. And for Bracton, you know, um, a bad week. He's not going to be in the 470s every week. This team's better than that. But here's the deal. Tita put up 680. Bracton wasn't going to win this week anyways. Uh, So, you know, Tita's just hot. The team's rolling. As Paul said, it, it absolutely astounds me at how he can trade so frequently and not slip up and make that mistake and, and team drop off. Um, he, he, I think it just gets better every week. Um, you know, very impressive showing out of Tita this week. And for Bracton, you know, um, lick your wounds, move on to next week. 
your team's definitely going to be better than 470 next week. And, uh, you know, things will get better. Probably need to maybe just tinker around a little bit, make a few moves. Um, I think the bats have got to put up more than 217 points to compete. Maybe that's a thing of you, your bats just had a slow week. Uh, maybe you've got some weak spots there you can address. You know, we'll see kind of what happens there. As for Tita, you know, who knows what's going to happen <laughs> with his team in the next hour, much less the next week. But, uh, you know, I, no one's sleeping on the sounds anymore. And uh, he's up there with the top dogs in the sleep. Definitely. And <clears throat> what I've come to as a conclusion is when you're going up against Tita's, just starting like on a given Monday, you're not just playing against whatever players he has that certain moment. You know you're buying into a week where the team is going to look different, that half the players are going to honestly be probably the hottest players in the league because that's what it seems like the players that he's acquiring and then trading away always seem to be the guys that are, you know, guys like Brent Rooker. I know he picked up off, off waivers, but the team is just always firing on all cylinders no matter who is on board. Um, it's just awesome to see. And, Bracton, we know your team definitely has done better than this throughout the past. It was an off week. You ran into a red-hot Tita. And I'm interested to see where you're going to do throughout the next week or two in terms of some more moves. But we'll go to the next matchup. Uh, I guess I'll do mine now. Um, so after, <laughs> after a uh, very slow week for me last week, um, I'm proud of my team. Uh, the yard goats responded, and I defeated Homco 901 to 617. Um, I'll go first. So first and foremost, shout out Homco. Um, everyone on this podcast talked about Homco's bats specifically, and my God, I mean his bats were incredible this week. I think he actually matched me in the bat department. Um, I know pitching has been an issue. We got a couple of good performances. I mean, even a guy like Louis Varlin who had like 61. Funny enough, but. I mean, if he can get some pitching, that team is going to be scary because his bats are pretty frightening, and it was kind of annoying just every day, Gleyber Torres or Daniel Lau, guys just hitting homers left and right. Um, but in terms of my team, pretty proud with uh, the performance. Um, I still think as a GM, I need to learn to get a little bit better with playing the hot hand. I left like 68 points of Anthony Rizzo on my bench when I know everyone else is playing well, but I'm in a lot of these tighter matchups that could decide some victories. Um, I'll talk about some of the moves I made, but shout out Chris. But yeah, I mean, I'm glad Justin Verlander's back. A um, little piss Max freaks out for two months, so I tried to address any potential pitch, pitching issues I'm going to have going forward. And I was talking about it with Cody and Bracton off air, but Anthony Volpe with 63 in my minors right now could be looking to move away some major guys to make some room from him potentially. So be on the lookout for that. And we'll start with Paul. What do you think of this one? Yeah, you hit on it with uh, with Homko's bats. And I think I said on the podcast last week that I was the only one that thought this matchup might be close. And I thought it might be close entirely because of Homko's bats. I mean, he literally matched 412 to 412 with John Height this week. I mean, it's... 412 is a ton of points to put up with the bats. So shout out Hamka for that. You know, the arm's still kind of lacking behind, but as, we, as everybody knows, it's hard to get arms in this league. Um, but as for John Height, you know, team's rolling. He's got studs all over the place. Um, I wanted to shout out Felix Bautista, my former closer, the Orioles closer. He recorded three saves this week. He recorded 10 outs this week, and seven of them were strikeouts. Dog. That's how, that's how you get to 47 points, and that's how you have you know a top-level closer. Um, you said Gallon. You said Bassett. Otani's 58. Um, just a really solid overall week from John Height. 900 points. That's you know, elite level. I'm not sure if anyone's, except for the first week where it was extended, I think in a seven-day week, that might be the top score of this year. So, congrats to John Height. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, I, I'll pat my back a little bit on that one. I was monitoring just the score because I know Cody hit like 850-something. So, I wanted to try to potentially beat that. And again, I'll talk a little bit about my matchup with Bry, how I kind of wish this was also against him next week, too. But, uh, Cody, you can go next. Yeah, so what stands out to me is this is John Height kind of flexing his muscle and saying he's the best team in the league. Um, until someone else puts up 900 points in a seven-day week, you know, I think I think that's going to stand. 
In terms of Homco, you guys hit on the bats. The bats were impressive. They've been impressive. A couple of things, man. Homco's a really good manager. And he swooped in on Riley Green when a lot of people had kind of wrote him off already. And Riley Green put up 46 points for him. Um, you know, Luis Robert, he, he kind of thought about shopping him. He publicly shopped him a little bit. He hangs on to Luis Robert, 72-point week. Uh, kept him in this matchup, uh, somewhat kept him in this matchup. Um, Glyber Torres had a big week. Nate Lau had a big week. Um, Homko's legit, man. 620 points around that area. You can live there. If he can find a way to live in that area, really, he's got to do some work in the pitching department, which we talk about every podcast. It's easier said than done. Um, you know, th- there's some room here for, for Homko. He's right on the cusp. I've kind of joined in the ranks with the top dogs in this league. I mean, the bats are already there. The pitching is kind of there almost. Um, you know, so we'll see what he does. But, yeah, for John Hyde, I mean, I, uh, holy shit. I don't even know what else to say. I mean, 489 points from pitching. I've always said that pitching wins in this league, and that exact performance uh, is exactly why. I say that. I mean, if you, if your offense puts up 489 points, if your pitching puts up 489 points in a week, it doesn't matter what the bats do. It doesn't matter what the other team does. You're going to take the W every time. So congrats, John Hyde, on a huge win. Homco, do not give up, man. Your team is close. Uh, 600 points is 600 points. Forget the fact that you played John Hyde, lost by 300. Focus on... You know, the teams you're going to get on the schedule coming up, I think there's some winnable games for you. Just keep pushing. Yeah, thank you. And, Bracken, you have the last word for this matchup. You all kind of hit on everything I was going to say. I was just pissed off looking at Riley Green, 46, staring me right in the face like two weeks after I tried to forget the Detroit Tigers are a baseball team. He does that. That's great. Um yeah, my endless pursuits of trying to trade for Luis Robert is just not going to happen. He puts up 70 points, 72 points. It's great. But, yeah, the Homco is legit like you guys were talking about. I mean, Homco, man, if you decide you want to trade for some pitching, um, my door is open for, for one of these nice bats. Hopefully we can maybe work on Luis Robert for pitching if, we, if, you, if you are interested and if you're listening. But uh, congrats, John Hyde, on a – statement when 901 points in, in seven days is insane if i could do that that would be insane that would probably never happen but congrats to you and and your guys for balling out it's good can Thanks. i say one thing yeah yes 901 points me and connor this week combined for 859 points so john alone outscored both of us so <coughs> just an uh, interesting uh, wow well <clears throat> I could give the probably Hartford, Hartford Yargo guarantee that won't happen again anytime soon because <laughs> a, a lot of things went right for me this week and again um, two things I'll end with before we go to the next one first of all one with Homco you talk about the pitching troubles I completely forgot he's got Yuri Perez he debuted this week so hoping he'll probably call him up soon hopefully sometime this week um, so that should help in the pitching department. And number two, like we've seen in this league time and time again, Homco is a team that I wouldn't want to play in the playoffs because of the, the star power on the bats. And like we talked about in main chat throughout the week, anything can happen. Um, Cody had a similar performance. His team scored about 100 points less this week. I'm expecting a lot of the same for my team next week against you know a, a team at Brian who was just undefeated last week. So I'm proud to, to score this much. But, again, it's all about keeping consistent. So the job... It's obviously never finished. So let's head to the next matchup. Let's head to another high-scoring matchup for one team. Um, so Hen was able to defeat Scott this week, 787 to 428. Hen gets back in the wins department. Um, so that was Clearwater Beach Dogs versus the Richmond Flying Squirrels. Cody, you could start this one off. What did you think? Yeah, man, Hen could not afford to lose again, and he made sure he didn't. This was a huge rebound week for Hen Dog. Um, massive, massive scoring output. Uh, the bats at three seven, 375 points. Um, you know, his team is really, really good. He's played a tough schedule. Um, you know, 412 points from pitching is, is, is again, that's up there with John Hyde numbers. 
Uh, end dogs legit. He's for real. I think he's at three and three right now. Um, you know, kind of the same same situation as Paul. Hey, clean slate. Uh, you're back to zero. Uh, you know, you roll off some W's here in a row coming up in the next couple weeks. And, uh, you know, we'll see where it goes from there. One thing I watched with Hindog, I, I, I offered Hindog a trade this offseason. Well, not right before the season began, Bo Bichette for Wander Franco. And so I have – he declined, obviously. And I have been monitoring the two of them as they kind of jockey back and forth, number one shortstop, number two shortstop. And uh, Wander Franco had a big week and regained the number one shortstop in the league numbers right now. So uh, just for me personally, that's something I watch. Wander Franco's a dog. Uh, for Scott, yeah, not a lot to say, man. 428 points is uh, is not great. But when you when you when you break it down, I mean, it's it's kind of insane. His bats put up 388 points. He his bats actually outscored Hen Dog's bats. The issue he ran into is his pitching. Gave him 40 points this week. Um, that's bad. I think he had four, five, six guys that went negative for the week. Um, you know, he had a Corey Kluber start tonight uh, that he left on the bench, but it only got him one point anyways. Wouldn't have made much of a difference. So, again, man, it, it kind of goes back to there's a lot of teams in this league with some good bats. Uh, there's few teams in this league with good arms. And that's going to be the difference as the season moves on. Definitely, Braxton, you're up next. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at Scott's team, and I'm and I'm happy to see that the. I mean, we've been talking about like kind of like auditioning off guys for other teams and for, in rebuilding situations like this. But I'm looking at the kids that are going to be around long term. Francisco Alvarez had thirty. Tristan Casas had twenty nine. C.J. Abrams twenty seven. Like. These are Jake Fraley, 66. Like, there there are some good performances from guys that are going to be around Scott's team for a while, as well as maybe some guys like Lourdes Gurriel, 27, Joey Menezes, 32. Like, maybe some guys that he looks to flip here. But Hendog just uh, actually, I don't know if you if either one of you guys said this, but uh, actually lost the bets uh, points to, to Scott here, which I found to be kind of crazy given the star power on on Hen's side, but obviously the 412 to 40 pitching is going to do it to you. But um, congrats to Hen Dog on a Mitch Keller 125-point. Uh, That's insane. Points. That's insane. Uh, but, but yeah, uh, Hen Dog, keep rolling. Good, good, good stuff. Great stuff from Hen and Paul. You'll get the uh, last one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, Mitch Keller, 125 points, you know, had a complete game shutout. It just an unbelievable turnaround from a guy that so many people, myself included, wrote off. Um, you know, he found, he's found a home with, with Hendog and Clearwater. Uh, as for as for Scott, you know, we know what he's doing. He beat me last week, but... You know his long term plan isn't win; it's it's building this team up, and he's got the young pieces to do it. Um, so, just keep plugging along, Scott. Yeah, I think that's the way, the best way to put it. I, I forgot who brought up the point, but love to see Francisco Alvarez, Tristan Casas. Wow, Lars Newport, sixty one points too. So again, the bats are there. The pitching will come. Uh, I saw Braxton Garrett had a decent week as well. So. But shout out Hen, he got back on track. The team is is disgusting. There's so many elite players on this offense, and the pitching is starting to come around as well. Juan Soto was hashtag back. He had 73. But yeah, outside of Mitch Keller, um, something I want to point out though is I think throughout much of the rest of the regular season, first of all, losing Drew Rasmussen is definitely going to hurt Hen. I think that's similar to my Max Fried loss where. One of these aces are gone for both of us. And then also Sandy has looked very, and I mean very human so far um, this year. So I'm sure he'll turn it around soon. And Hen's only going to get better and better. He was definitely a candidate. He would have broken 800 points if he had probably had one more start. So that was definitely something to look out for. But two more matchups to talk about before we head to the deals. Let's do Dave versus Chad. So Rochester defeated Oklahoma City 595-501. to Bracton, you can go first. What did you see? 
Um, I believe this is Dave's first oh. win in the in, in since being back. So congrats to Dave on that. That's a big deal. Um, got some pretty balanced performances out of his bats, except Josh Lau balled out. I mean, the Josh Lau for Alex Cobb trade still baffles me every day. So good on good on Dave for capitalizing for that. Um, I also think Dave traded for Mackenzie Gore this week, I think, which we'll talk about a little later, but he didn't get anything for him this week, but that, that'll be interesting. 595 without arguably his best pitcher even getting a start for him. So that, that's, or now best pitcher. So that'll be interesting to watch going forward. Um, low performances from Brian Reynolds, uh, and some and Josh Jung only had eleven points too. So, really, really interesting. He was able to put up five ninety five and, and with some with some slumping pieces in there as well. Um, Chad, good week, five hundred points. Um, what do you call it? Would have beat four or five teams this week too. Just just from from that number. But uh, yeah, and we'll see what kind of trades are coming this week for both teams. But I can see some. Some action moving forward. Pretty cool to see a 56-point Kyle Freeland start in there as well. Or a couple of Kyle Freeland starts, I guess. 13 innings pitch. But, yeah, good, good fun week. Um, but And congrats, Dave, on getting his first win. It's good. Good stuff, Dave. Paul, you're up. Yeah, I think this, this week is more of what Dave is, is – his team is. Um. Tyler Wells, I know he traded him, but you know he's solid starting pitcher for the Orioles. Uh, he's got decent pieces in the bullpen. Um, you know, just a really solid week for Dave. As for Chad, uh, fifty-six points from Kyle Freeland is a ton of points. Um, but shout out Brandon Pafat, or however you say his name, I don't know. Um, he he called him up, I think, this week for uh, his two starts. You know, 13 points, it's not a lot, but eight strikeouts and 10 innings. Uh, I like the kid's future, and he's a good piece for Chad. Definitely, and Cody, go the last words. Yeah, this is this is fun to watch, man. I know Dave's excited. Dave uh, Dave, Dave doesn't embrace the rebuild. Uh, he wants to win. He wants to compete. I respect it, and, uh, we, you know, by, by no means is this team a finished product. Uh, Dave's got a lot of work to do. I know he knows that. But I know it's got to feel good to, to get close to 600, get your first win, uh, complete performance offensively, and, and some nice some nice performances pitching. This is another team that's got the bats and needs some arms. Uh, and, again, you know, those are hard to come by. The top teams are kind of hoarding them. I know uh, very few teams are shopping them around. Uh, but, you know, uh, I know Dave's got to be excited. Uh, Chad, Chad's all future, man. Um He's he's got a great one ahead of him too. He's got some really nice pieces to build around. Uh, wins and losses don't mean too much to him right now, uh, but I know Dave's glad to get a win. Um, expecting to see more out of that out of Dave as he continues to make trades. And uh, you know, as far as Chad goes, like I said, wins and losses aren't a thing for him right now. He's uh, picking up free agents, getting them to get some value, and trading them off for more assets for the future. It's a, it's a good formula. He's been able to pull it off quite a bit. It'll be fun to watch him continue to do so. Yeah, definitely. Shout out, Dave. He's starting to turn this team around. It's about Josh Lowe as a dog. I mean, 53 points. He's young. He's part of the, the, the Tampa Bay Bat Factory right now. And on Chad's team, he's always been sticking around a lot of these matchups. So I think some of the ones are going to come soon. Uh, quick shout out, Joey Gallo. I mean, this year he's been tearing the cover off the ball. He already has almost 10 home runs. So good stuff. Expect some more wins in the future. Let's go to the last matchup of week number six. It was Jamie versus Smell. And Tampa was able to get the win. 745 to 580. Paul, you go first. Yeah, 482 points from Jamie, you know, from just from his bats is just a crazy. It's it outscored both me and Connor this week. Um, just a crazy number. You know, we all said, you know, that Jamie starting slow, but you know, it seems really good. He he had a coming out party this week. You know, he beat El Paso and Smell uh pretty handily. You know, solid pitching performance, two sixty three from his pitching. The even counting Kenley Janison who just 
absolutely crapped the bed this week. Two blown saves, two losses. Um, but overall, you know, Jamie has a great team. You know, he's tough to trade with, but he know he knows his values on his guys, and he he doesn't budge. So I I can respect that. Um, for the other side, for Smell, he's got the he's got solid pieces. He's you know a team that I think can compete for a playoff sp- uh, spot. But I mean, I Miles Michaelis forty points, he decently tonight pitched. Um, but he he if he can make some moves, I think he I think he's got a good position um, for the playoffs. Definitely, and Bracton, you're up next. Yeah, I I am not excited about the fact that I'm going to have to play Jamie and face the same 13 batters that are going to put up 500 points on me just about here. So that's that's not going to be fun for me next week, watching all these guys pop off. But congrats to Jamie on sticking it out and getting a win and having the tide start to turn a little bit here. Uh looks well set up to beat me next week and rattle off two in a row. But um, for Smell, you Paul touched on it, 40-piece 40 p- 40 for Miles Mikolas and some other decent performances. 580 would have been um, contending with a lot of teams this week. Would have beat me, would have beat both Paul and Connor, would have beat Chad, would have been up there with Dave. Like It's a respectable number. Um so we'll, we'll see what Smell continues to do, but he's been one of the most interesting teams in the league thus far, so interested to see where he's going the rest of the way. Yep, and Cody, you're up. Yeah, it's pretty interesting, man. Jamie kind of had his best week, and Garrett Cole kind of had the worst outing that he's had all season for uh, the Tarpons. But, you know, this is kind of what we expected to see out of this team. Um you know, in that high 600s, low 700s, scoring each week. Uh, the schedule, like I said, I think Jamie's finally getting into an easier part of the schedule. He's going to rally off some wins here, kind of get that record looking looking better again. As far as smells concerned, uh, you know, he's got a good team. Again, the bats are there and the pitching's not. Uh, I keep saying that, but that seems to be kind of like a common occurrence here among a lot of these teams. Um you know, I don't really know what Smell's doing in terms of if he's if he's trying to hang and compete right now or if he's looking to the future. He hasn't kind of declared that yet. That's okay. It's early in the season. Uh, but, you know, Jamie, Jamie's got a good team. Jamie's going to be a force to be reckoned with. No one wants to see the tarpons on the schedule. Definitely. Shout out, Jamie. The, the coming out party was here. Um, I think this is what his offense is going to do basically every week, barring any unforeseen injuries. Um, I really think the only weakness, again, we talked about, I mean, the managerial skills. If he just was able to, if he could hit the star limit every single week. I know he was off by one this week, so it wasn't that big of a deal. But if he's doing 12 pitchers every week, his team is going to be borderline impossible to beat. Um, just because of the amount of talent he's accumulated on this team. Um, and just, you know, the amount of just star power he has. Shout out to Smell. I know we had a very close matchup this week. 580, pretty respectable, almost hit 600. Um, but again, interesting to see what direction he's going to go in. Uh, the rest of the season, because like Cody mentioned, don't really know if it's heading towards contention or more of just retooling slash rebuilding. But all right, matchups over. Time for the deals. Um, a lot happened this week, um, so I think we have to go back from to like May, I think the seventh or the eighth, something like that. Paul, I think I know you're heading out soon, so I'll let you go first, real quick. Uh, any trades you made, and then anything you want to talk about? Yeah, uh, so I'll start with my first one, which was I uh, gave. Tita, Tink Kens, and Peyton Pallett. I got Kodai Senga. Uh, I'm a big believer in Kodai Senga. Um, I know some around the league kind of have mixed opinions, but um, I'm kind of hoping he can follow the career path of Yu Darvish a little bit. Uh, if you look back at Yu Darvish's first year in the league, I know he was only 24 and Senga's 30 or whatever he is. Um, but, you know, he had more walks than he had for the rest of his career. And he had about the same strikeouts, maybe a little bit less. Um, but I, I, I like him, and he's he's a valuable arm that you know if if it push comes to shove, I might just trade him, you know, towards the deadline. Um, the other one or team popular this week because he I think he got traded three times. Um, but for me, uh, I got James Paxton and Parker Meadows from Tita. 
for David Peterson. And then James Jackson went to throw nine strikeouts in six innings in his first start in two years. Uh, so I immediately already liked the return I got there. And he's probably another guy I'll look to flip as the deadline gets closer. Um, and then Brady Singer. I got Brady Singer from Dave for Gavin Stone and Parker Meadows. Um, I, I think Brady Singer is going to turn around. I don't really have metrics to back that up, but that's just more of a gut feeling for me. I think he's a guy that in baseball is going to be traded closer to the deadline. And typically when a guy gets traded, you know, he, his production bumps up a notch. Um, so he's a guy I'm not really looking to flip. I'm hoping he can stick on my team for a while. Uh, then there was one trade that Tia made this week I wanted to talk about. It's he got um, Noel Zay Marte for, or um, he got Mart or not Marte, um, Matt McClain. He got Matt McClain from Bry, and he gave Cal Quantrill. And I just saw just before the podcast started that Matt McClain's getting called up to Cincinnati. Uh, Matt McClain's a guy that I really like, and he knows I've really liked him for a while. Uh, I've been trying to get him from Bragg for a while. Um, I think he's going to be of of McLean, De La Cruz, and Noel V. Marte. I don't think he's going to be better than De La Cruz, but I certainly think he has potential to be right there with Marte, if not a little bit better. Um, so that, I think that's a trade that's really going to work out for uh, Tita. Yeah, it's interesting to hear because I know we always talk about Marte and De La Cruz, but another red in, in, in the coming days should be finally one in the MLB. Cody, uh, what do you have to say? Yeah, this was an interesting week. Uh, I didn't make a single trade all week, but there was a ton of trades. And one thing that I'm noticing as I'm looking at all these deals from the week is if, if you wanted pitching, this was the week to get them. I mean, so many pitchers moved. Paul got Cody Sanga. Smell got Mason Miller and Graham Ashcraft. John Height got Cal Quentrell, who he flipped for Jordan Montgomery. Um, Tita got John Gray. Paul got James Paxton. Tita gets Blake Snell. Um, let's see here. Paul gets Brady Singer. Tita gets J.P. France, and I believe he flipped to John Height. I believe John Height has J.P. France. Is that right, John? No, I do not. I got uh, Erod today. So that was Erod, okay, my bad. Uh, but Lance Lynn, I got Lance Lynn. Andrew Heaney was traded to Tita. Uh, Lance McCullers and Trevor Rogers was traded to Dave. Uh, let's see, Matt Gore went to Dave. I mean, pitchers was just flying off the board here. Bry got Tony Gonsolin. Uh, Homko got Kyle Wright. Uh, Erod, John Height got it. Uh, Eduardo Rodriguez, TD got mm-hmm. Seth Lugo, some prospects. I mean, uh, you know, crazy to see that many pitchers being moved. Um, and like I said, there's so many teams that need pitching. You know, if you hear about these guys on, on the block, these arms on the block, go get them. So many teams have the bats to compete, but they just don't have the arms. And, you know, Bry got, a, Bry got Lance Lynn for, for two worst. Um, Lance Lynn's a guy that struggled, but Man, you've got to believe Lance Lynn's worth that. Um, if he can kind of right the ship, which, you know, his track record, track record shows that he will. Um, same thing with Paul with Brady Singer. Uh, like I think Paul just mentioned, you know, Brady Singer is going to get better, um, and he's most likely going to be traded to a better team with some run support. Uh, so that, you know, that's going to bode well for him. I'm looking here. There was a trade I wanted to mention. This was big. Um you know, Dave is kind of focused on uh, winning and, and trying to get that team right. And then he, he you know, and, and probably his best week since he took over, he traded Corey Seager and Brian Reynolds away for uh, two first round picks, two second round picks, Kate Savali and Chase DeLauder. Um, and, but yet he had his best week. So, you know, that, that kind of goes to show you what retooling versus rebuilding uh, can do for you. And then, you know, Bri ends up with Noel Marte, who's moved around just a hundred times this season, kind of shocked uh, for that. I, I'm pretty sure he won't be moving anymore. That's a guy that Bri is probably going to hold on to. But 
But yeah, a lot of trades, a lot of moves this week. As always, T- as long as Tate is in the league, there's going to be weeks like this. Uh, I'll pass it on to Bracton. Yeah, Bracton, you're up. So, Paul touched on my trade of the week, which I'll talk about after I talk about my one deal. Uh, I made a controversial trade. Uh, I got Willie Adamas for a first, a third, two four, or wait, three thirds, two fourths. Ken Waldachuk in a first. Uh, the draft picks don't do much for me right now. I'm trying to win and get better, but I have a, a weird situation where my star shortstop got hurt, O'Neill Cruz, and I have a young guy, Zach Nito, who is not ready to be a full-time starter uh fantasy starter i think he's he's been he's been playing pretty well at the mlb level especially given his age but for fantasy production wise i felt like i really needed a shortstop to come in there and that i could feel more comfortable playing above him for a little while at least until nito starts to get some more offensively productive and i noticed willie adamas on connor's team Playing well, he has some power, um, 27 years old, fit kind of like my timeline, so I felt comfortable making that move. But Paul touched on it. Trade of the week right here for me. Uh, I have to find it. Yeah, Tita gets Matt McClain. Bry gets Cal, uh, Cal Quantrill. This, to me, is going to be a huge deal that we're going to talk about probably – for the foreseeable future, especially now that Matt McClain's called up. I am huge on this young Cincinnati Reds team. I have Ellie De La Cruz. I've actively been in uh, – you are gonna, you guys are going to find this funny, but I've been an active participant on Reds Twitter recently, and all of the fan base is encouraging Reds management to call up McClain and uh, Carson Encarnacion Strand and Ellie De La Cruz for their series against the Yankees. Uh, coming up this week, uh, Matt McClain now we know is going to be up, and I'm going to be following this very closely. I think Tita got a home run here, uh, no pun intended, just absolute great trade from Tita. And I also think that Dave did very well in the trade that Cody just talked about. Um, yeah, he gave up Corey Seager and Brian Reynolds, but those two first-round picks he got are going to be high first, if not one and two from or not um maybe not maybe not Homko's pick sorry I got it confused for a second but the the Connor pick could easily be first or second overall so I think Dave got some really nice pieces I'm a huge Chase DeLauder fan as I am Gavin Cross fan who I believe Dave also has so Dave's got some pieces uh in the now and the future but I wanted to point out that trade as well as the Matt McLean trade is specifically the ones that stood out to me this week and a good solid week of movement and then one more thing I wanted to touch on Bobby Miller Jackson Job Heston Kerstad and Tyler Wells to Tita for Mackenzie Gore just Dave continuing to wheel and deal he gets his best arm and uh I'll be interested to see how Gore does for Dave going forward I don't think he'll move again so yeah definitely interesting to see um as we hey we've got we've got breaking news yeah i was about to say that i just breaking news tita trades tommy edmund and brent rooker to smell for seo suzuki oh that what really looks like that's the whole deal there uh, we haven't got a post in discord but that's what's on fan tracks um i like that for smell a lot i yeah, like that for, i like it for smell too um I, and i'm a, i'm a big suzuki guy uh looks like tita did it and just called up matt mcclain looks oh, like there okay, was some so there it is angle there t- i like it there it is he was making he was making room for matt mcclain damn wait is, uh, he, is he listening to this is that is that yeah he's in here yeah, all right, look at look at the Matt McLean hype le- influencing a trade here. I like it. That's good. That's, that's good. I, yeah. I still think, uh, you know, with that trade, listen, Brent Rooker's not going to win the MVP. I mean, the guy is playing his balls off right now, and he's looking great. I see why Tita moved on him. Uh, Tommy Edmonds, a guy that, that's kind of come back down to earth, uh, not hitting real well, not stealing bases. Um, and Seiya Suzuki's a guy that's got a lot of pop. He's been injured. He's been hot recently for the Cubs. 
uh, I, you know, and you want to make room for Matt McLean. I, I guess it makes more sense the more you let it digest. Yeah, I think I have to agree with that. Um, I'm not a big Suzuki guy, but when you look at it, I mean, I'm a big proponent of, especially in the near future, if you're trading a guy who just picked up off waivers relatively, using him in a trade. I don't think it's the biggest deal in the world because, like you mentioned, Rooker's not going to be that, I think, throughout the rest of the regular season. Maybe we're wrong, but um, at least at this level. Um, Tommy Emmon, like you mentioned, definitely has looked a lot more human this season. Pretty surprised. I know he had a bit of a hot stretch last week. Um, but hasn't really been there. But before I talk about my trades, real quick, uh, Bracken, do you have anything else to say about this one? Um, no, I, I like it for smell. But now that I know that the Matt McLean angle is there, Tita, have fun, man. This guy's a baller. I, I, I can't wait to watch this young Reds. Let's just get Ellie up there pretty soon here, and we'll start to have some serious fun. It'll be good. Yeah, definitely. But all right, I'm going to just do my trades real quick. A bit of a busier week for me. Um, my pitching is obviously starting to really come to fruition with Verlander back. But Max Freed's announced two months out. So I really was trying to replace that pretty quickly um, or, or, or some remnants of that. Um, so first and foremost, I trade away uh, Jordan Groshans, uh, Max Muncy in a fourth for Cal Quantrill. It was sort of a, a buy low move. Um, I wasn't going to keep Quantrill for that long um, because I really had Jordan Montgomery on my radar for the last, honestly, couple of weeks. Um, so then a little bit later, I traded Quantrill and, and Brian uh, Rocchio for Montgomery. Um, for this trade, I was not happy with having to move Rocchio, or whatever you say his name. Tita did a good job with uh, with, with dealing with me here. Um, I know I got the stip, but, I mean, he's he's been tearing the uh, cover off the ball recently. He's been uh, AAA for Cleveland. He's going to be really good. Yeah, he'll they, be up soon, too. Yeah, they might not even re-sign Ahmed Rosario now because of him. So I didn't really want to lose him, but... Um, I think I know Jordan Montgomery had a f- terrible week once I traded for him, but um, he's pretty consistent. You know, a twenty-point arm, which is going to go a long way. Um, so I made that trade, and then the other big trade I made was uh, about a couple hours ago. Um, this one, I think, on paper, Tito won. Um, but first of all, Seth Lugo, I love the guy. He's been pitching great. Picked him up off waivers, so not the end of the world for me. But losing Jacob Berry, Warren, and Melton, I definitely wanted to try to lose some of the prospect capital I gave up there. Like I was trying to maybe only trade one or two guys, but Tito was able to extend it to three. Getting Erod, um, I think between him and Montgomery, I think I have my base pretty much covered now with Freed out for, for the next two months or, or so. Um, I got Luis Severino's coming back probably sometime this week. Um, I know we haven't talked about Altuve, he'll be back too. But in terms of pitching, Severino should be back soon. So I feel a lot better and more comfortable with my pitching now. Now that uh, even though Freed's down, Erod has been, I think, SP10 right now. He's pitching out of his mind. Um, I know Detroit has been terrible, but um, he's sort of one of those guys that I know he's like breaking out again. He's been a, a huge surprise. Um, but with the way he's pitching, I'm expecting just solid numbers, even if he's not going to pitch to this level. Um, again, to, to pay for an arm that's hot in this league, kind of why you have to give up. So that's why credit to Tita for getting a, a, a shit ton of assets. Um, I'm trying to get Jacob Berry back eventually. I love that guy. I've had him four times. But um, looking around the league, one other trade I wanted to bring up. Uh, I mean, there were a ton of trades. But Hen getting Max Muncy for two prospects, he had actually, um, we were talking about it, because he was like, do you think this is worth it? Because um, he was missing sort of, I think, a second base, third base bet. I think someone was hurt. Uh, I think that was a good buy low move for Hen um, to sort of keep up in the quote-unquote arms race here. Um, Tommy Emmon just keeps getting passed around, which is pretty funny. Bry getting Tony Gonsolin. I know Cody weren't a fan of that because you had a play against Tony Gonsolin. A bit of a surprising trade today, though, too. I know Kyle Wright recently got flipped to Connor. Uh, Bahamco gets Ty France, Kyle Wright, and Vaughn Grissom. Connor gets Jose Salas, Renfro, Bregman, Ferris, a third and a fourth. A lot of names being thrown around there. So I don't know how I feel about it just yet. I mean, I know Kyle Wright's going to be out for a while, but getting him and Grissom in France, a lot of youth now for Hamco that he's trying to build on. I know Bregman's a little bit older. Renfro, I'm not a huge fan of. Um, but Salas is good. Ferris, I'm a fan of. And then the picks, obviously, are picks. So interesting trade there. And the last trade I wanted to bring up, shout out to you for getting Mackenzie Gore. I was getting somewhat close with Tita. Um, unfortunately, during the, the, the trade, uh, little window that Tita had go on the block I was moving out from college so I couldn't really pay attention I was going to maybe put one of my bigger bats potentially in that trade um, but Dave swooped in and did a, a big prospect haul that I think Tita was pretty happy with so I think that's it for the trades let's head um, to the last segment let's do the week seven if I'm not mistaken yes week seven 
matchup for, again, our Johnny Lee Memorial League. A lot of interesting ones this week. I'm trying to figure out who I think is the, the matchup of the week. Um, I don't have an answer for that yet, so let's just start from the bottom. Let's start with Jamie versus Bracton. Um, unfortunately, Paul had to dip a little bit early tonight, so Bracton and Cody, you're left. So we'll start with Bracton since you'll be facing off against Tampa. What do you think? Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that the pitching can keep it about the same like it was this week. And if I can do that, I think it might be a game because I, the, of the sheer volume of bats, the, of bats that I'm planning on having. So the way I've been looking at Jamie's team, he typically has around 13 to 15 batters consistently, and those 13 to 15 batters are ballers, granted, like Pete Alonzo, Gunnar Henderson, Jazz Chisholm, Bobby Witt, Acuna, Tatis, Bryce Harper, Trey Turner, Freddie Freeman, they're beasts. But if I can get some waiver movement around maybe pick up some guys at the right time here as long as my pitching can keep it close i think we might have a game because i do think that i will get an extra five to six starts um because i will i will start all 12 i have 12 slated already because i set my lineups already so we'll see um i do think i'm gonna lose but i will be judging based on the, the loss margin. So if I can lose by 25 or 50, that'll give me a good benchmark. But maybe if, maybe we'll see. I don't know. Yeah. Cody, what do you have to say? Yeah, this one's going to be tough for Braxton. Um, Jamie's team is rolling right now. You know, we've talked about the offensive output that Braxton's going to have to endure this week. Uh, but I, I think Braxton's got a point, man. If the pitching plays up, for him this week, if he, if he could get an arm that has a big start through the trade market, or if his guys just play kind of you know at the top of their game this week, he could keep it close. Uh, but I think as is, you know, you got to say that J- Jamie's the favorite to take this matchup. Yeah, I was thinking pretty hard about this one. Um, again, I like what Brack's been doing lately. The team has gotten so much more competitive, and I really like some of the moves he's made. Albeit, I don't know what moves are going to be made by the end of the week. Um, but right now, I think Jamie's going to go on a little bit of a run here after some bad luck. Um, I do think it will be slightly closer because I do think, again, Bracton is definitely right now a better in-game manager than Jamie is. I think Bracton will obviously hit the 12 starts. We don't know that for Jamie just yet. So maybe this will be the week. Uh, if Jamie gets 12 starts, I think it's, it's pretty much over. But um, the offense, I think, is going to be elite. Um, we know Jamie's pitching, too. You know, I think he's going to get some guys back eventually as well. But Bracton's side, you got guys like Hunter Brown, Logan Webb. These are guys, you know, starting to see some complete game shutouts. These are sort of candidates, I think, that could throw one. Um, but, you know, on, on offense, I think Brett Beatty's been playing well. It's interesting to see what he's doing with Willie Adamas. So I'm going to take Jamie, but I think it's going to be somewhat close. I'm going to say within 75 points. Um, but I think Bracton's going to make some moves this week to improve whatever needs he's looking for. Um, and, again, I think he's going to have more players going than Jamie just of the certain managerial uh, things we've seen recently. But let's now go to Cody versus Dave. Cody, uh, you can begin first since you'll be taking on Rochester. Yeah, you know, um, I, I don't want to say that I feel like I can breathe this week because Dave's team played well last week. But, I mean, you know, I, I do think that uh, on paper, uh, you know, I'm going to be the favorite. But I know that, that Dave's really got this team going in the right direction. Uh, he's got some bats that are really hot right now. Josh Lau, Christopher Morrell, um, Jaron Duran, guys like that. He just got Matt Gore, um, and you know, um, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be giving him you know all I can do, especially early in the matchup. Hopefully, you know, I can put him away by the weekend and have a, a calm weekend, unlike this week. But uh, yeah, you know. Um, it, it's hard to ever feel confident, um, especially when my team kind of played the way it did last week. I'm hoping we recover, bounce back well, but uh, you, you never really know. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun week. Definitely, well, Big Bracton, what are your analysis on this one? Um, not much. I think Cody's gonna win, and I like what the fan track projection says. It's four sixty nine points for Dave and seven hundred and six for Cody. That's about how I see it. Uh, I don't see some of these guys struggling again like like previous weeks. I think Dylan Cease is going to rebound. Um, I think Marcus Stroman will rebound. Like I think we'll see some some big performances from some guys on Cody's team that will 
not well that will be too much for dave to handle here but i do think dave puts up a respectful a respectable number that would beat like three or four teams i, I that's that's my prediction yeah i'm gonna agree with you guys i'm gonna go with the high rides uh, i mean good teams find ways to win even if the point totals aren't always there um i think that would be the opposite this way i think he's gonna put uh, cody's gonna put on a ton of points um, especially guys like uh, McClanahan. I mean, he's had really one bad start the whole year, and it happened to be against Bryce. So I'm sure he'll go for 40 to 50 points this week. Sean Murphy, dog. Um, so many guys on that team are dogs. I do think Dave, though, is going to put up, a, I think, a respectable point total, somewhere maybe 500, maybe low 600s if he gets a couple of really big um, performances, maybe makes a couple of trades. But I'm going to stick with hot rods for this one. So now... It's probably the matchup of the week, honestly. I mean, we can argue about this. Me versus Bri. I am definitely nervous for this one after seeing what the the Bri Cody matchup turned out to be. Um, so I'll get my thoughts first. Um, so I think this is this is going to be my biggest test of uh, in, of the season in terms of my managerial ability, which I think I've done a decent job so far. But I think there's some room for improvement again. Guys like Anthony Rizzo, who had almost 70 points, were on my bench, so. I gotta have every point I can against a team like Bry. Um, I, I'm not gonna pick because I, I'm involved in it, but I will say, uh, I mean, I already got my starts somewhat planned out. I think I'm at 13, so I'm gonna obviously knock one down. But um, some of the trades I made, um, I'm pretty confident in all the pitchers that I have going. I don't have to like hold my breath and like have a panic attack when Brad when uh, Brad Keller's pitching. So that's nice. Um, in terms of Bry, um, he's got a, a lot of quality arms. Um, I think I do prefer, I mean, the star power of my arms a little bit more, but there are some guys that scare me that could really have like a Nathan Avaldi type performance. I'm looking at guys like Hunter Green, who was off last week. Um, so many of these arms, I think, could really go for a, a big way. His offense is solid. He's going to pick up guys, too, throughout the week that are going to be red hot. Um, again, James Altman, he's going to drop 100. I already know it. Um, but, yeah, it should be a fun one. I'm excited to play Bry. I uh, obviously want to stay undefeated, so I'm trying everything I can to, to stay that way. But I'm excited. Hopefully Severino's back. Altuve should be back this week. Um, so you're seeing somewhat more of what the yard goal should look like by the end of the season. I wish Max Fried wasn't dead, but you know can't get everything you want. But, Cody, I'll let you analyze this one first. Yeah, this is a this is definitely the game of the week. Um, you know, John Hyde, it's going to be interesting to kind of see – uh, how your team, what your team does after a 900 point week. Uh, a lot of times, you know, you kind of come back to earth after those big matchups. Uh, and, and like I told you before, Bry's going to throw the kitchen sink at you, man. You got, you got to manage with him. You got to hang there. Um, he is a feisty, feisty opponent to play in fantasy. Uh, but, you know, as everything stands right now, I'm going to give the advantage to John Hyde, the yard goats. Uh, to me, that's the top team in the league. Uh, until they're knocked off. I don't see anybody knocking off the yard goats anytime soon, especially as hot as that team is playing right now. Um, I, I think Brian's going to be – I think it's going to be tight. I, don't, I think he's going to be in it all week. Uh, but I think uh, the yard goats hang on and win by 40 points, 50 points on Sunday. I mean, if I win by one point or 100 points, I just want to win. So <laughs> – I mean, Bry's going to give it all he's got, so that's that's what I'm expecting. Bracton, what do you have to say? See, I, I disagree here. I think that it's going to be one of two things. It's either going to be a John Hype blowout or Bry's going to win by not very much. Like, there there, there isn't going to be an in-between. Like, I think the closer it is, the more favorable it, it is for Bry. Yeah. Um, I think that it will be pretty close for a little bit, and then maybe they – I, I'm I'm thinking by Thursday or Friday we still don't have a clear winner, but then either John Hyde just has the best Saturday Sunday, and wins by a hundred, or Bry keeps it close and it's like a fifteen point game and he'll win. Like I, I, it's gonna be really really fun to watch this one. I could very well see it going either way. I wish that um, the fan tracks projections could reflect another eight starts for Bry so I could see what they're thinking, but. What I'm thinking is it's either going to be a John Height win or Bry's going to win by not a lot. So we'll see. I'm also a bigger believer on Bry's team than a lot of people in this league. But I also really like what he does with the streaming and everything. So I, I it'll be very, very fun to watch. This is one of my matchups of the week along with uh, one other one that we'll talk about in a minute. 
I'm sure. Yeah, I that I think you hit it on pretty well. Um, I want to try to get ahead early. That's what I've noticed. Like when I'm able to to build a substantial lead, and I'm glad I have a lot of my pitching early on too, so I can sort of maintain that. Um, but yeah, Bry being able to manage the way he does, I've been really trying to work on that. The last two weeks, I've done a better job of streaming pitchers. I had a lot of quality guys this week. I had maybe one bad performance. I know it's honestly luck with some of these middle relievers, but we're going to be going for the same guys, so it's whoever's got the faster fingers almost. But good luck to you, Bri. Excited to play, man. Should be fun. Let's head to, I'm guessing this is Bracton's pick of the week or one of his pick of the week. Is it Tita Hen? Tita Hen is, is going to be very interesting to watch for me, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So let's let's do that one and practice you can go first. That that's what I was thinking. Oh, do we just do we just have a trade? Oh no, Snell Smell just accepted the one other one. Okay, sorry. Um yeah. I am really excited to see what's going on here. Cause Tita's still undefeated going up against Hendog, who's had a good couple of weeks here back to back. So I wanna see what happens here i think that it will be i mean i can't i don't really want to make a pick here because if i'm if i pick hen dog and tita wins i mean tita's a dog and he and he just continues to be good and everything but i don't i don't want to pick against tita here because something's telling me that tita could pull this upset off but if it is if he does win is it really an upset i mean he's he's he's, he's six and out. i mean, like this is what I'm saying. I I really am gonna be paying attention to this line, the this matchup, because if 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 Hen loses this one, um, I could I could see something happening here. This this could get really interesting really fast if Hen drops this one. So I I'm I'm very interested to see how this goes. And Matt McLean yeah. for Tita. So we gotta we gotta we gotta watch this now. So. You're on Matt McLean watch for the week. Cody, you're up. So, yeah, um, you know, Hindog has been – it's kind of been the book on him all season. It's 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 700-point week, 500-point week, 700-point week, 500-point week. Um, Tita may be catching him at the right time because he put up 750 points last week. So, you know, if the trend continues, Hindog's going to have a down week. Uh, but you know, that being said, man, I think even if Finn dog has a good week, I- I'm going to go with the sounds here. Uh, Tita has been rolling. That team is locked and loaded, uh, top to bottom. You know, no one's sleeping on the sounds anymore. I'm certainly not. So I think, th- I think this is going to be a great, fantastic matchup. I think it's going to come down to the Sunday night game, but I'm going to give, I'm going to give the advantage to the sounds. I think Tita pulls this one out and goes to seven and oh. Interesting. So, Braxton, you didn't give it a, a, a winner. Uh, Cody, you picked Tita. I've been thinking a lot about this one. And, I mean, again, it's hard. I'm not even looking at Tita's players because they're going to be different by the end of the week and they're going to be, I'm sure, better than they are now. Um, for now, I actually, I mean, I'm going to lean hen with this one um, just because, I mean, I, I keep looking at the Juan Soto, Tucker, Alvarez outfield. And it's just like, it's so hard to pick against that unless there's a clear cut reason. Um, another thing I will bring up, I mean, for a lot of us in this, or a couple of us in this league, I mean, we're, a, lot, a couple of us are in college, uh, finals are winding down. I know Hen was pretty busy, so he had a couple of mistakes here and there. Um, he knows he's playing Tita this week. He's going to want to beat Tita. Um, I think he's going to do a, a better job managing than he's done in the last couple of weeks as well, because Tita's been, you know, a top three manager, pure manager in this league um, for throughout the whole season. So I think he's going to be incredibly close first and foremost. I'm going to expect high 600, low 700, potentially. Uh, but I will lean Hen by a slight, I mean, slight margin. But again, I wouldn't be surprised if Tita gets the win and extends his undefeated streak to even longer. Can I add so we got three to more that? to talk about. Can I add something to that ball. really quick? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think you're right, John. How you make up a really good point. Post school Hen is, is going to be something that's really interesting. He's a, he's a different animal. No, I. I, I completely kind of forgot about that and i'm gonna be i'm gonna be very interested to see if hen dog's more active in maine or in trades or anything because i think that 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 definitely played a factor into the last couple weeks just i mean i I barely saw him i'm sure he was he was doing a lot of work and and uh he was busy getting school stuff done but post school hen that's gonna be interesting good good point there so now now i could totally see him pulling it out this week for sure if he's if he's all in, yeah. that, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, 
Hen's one of my best friends, so we talk a lot. But the last, like, maybe week, a little less than a week, he's already talked pretty much a lot more about what's been going on than he had. Uh, we've got a lot going on at school, obviously. So, I mean, now that the semester's over, I mean, we're starting jobs soon. But uh, I'm excited to see what he's going to be doing going forward. We know Tita's going to get his team better than it already is right now. So maybe Hen will make a move here and there, continue to upgrade the pitching, which, again, I think is still a weakness uh, for his team. I, I know Mitch Keller was, was God, but he's not going to have that this week. Uh, I, I mean, 125 points is absurd. Still going to be solid, but he's going to still look for some more arms, I, I, I believe so. But let's head to Paul versus Mel. Unfortunately, Paul had a dip. So let's go to Cody first. What do you think of this one? Yeah, this is an interesting matchup, man. This is this has got a lot uh, going on here. Paul's three and three, Smells two and four. Uh, they're pretty similar in uh, total points scored on the year. Actually, uh, Smell has three thousand six hundred twenty-six points. Paul has three thousand six hundred ninety-two points. Um, so you know the, this matchup is going to be going to be interesting. It's going to be another one of those tight matchups, I believe. Um, it's hard for me to say who who kind of has the uh, advantage. Um, just looking kind of at names here on the list, I'm I, I'm going to say Paul pulls this out uh, after having a pretty bad week last week at 440 points. I think his team uh, kind of turns it around a little bit, and uh, he he he's more up in the high 500s, low 600s. And I think if he can do that, that's enough to hold off Smell, who I see coming in around the low 500s. So I'm going to give the advantage to the Norfolk Tides this week. Bragdon, what's your prediction? I, I agree with Cody, but I do think it will be close. I think that these are pretty evenly matched teams as far as batting goes. But I, I do really like some of the pitchers Paul has, like Justin Steele and Jose Kikuchi and, and uh, Jose Barrios and guys like that. I think that will be the difference here. And Paul wins in a close one. Yeah, I've been going back and forth with this one again. I'm still scarred from Smell almost beating me last week. Um, I think it's going to be pretty close, honestly. I'm going to lean Paul because I love, I love Esteban Ruiz. Um, I mean, you see guys like Kyle Schwarber, Correa, uh, Adley, so many superstars on this team. Um, some guys on Smell's team. I think mean, Harrison Bader's actually been super hot lately. Ian Happ's been having a good season. Going to be interesting to see with Brent Rooker now in the mix with no more uh, Suzuki. But um, I'm going to leave Paul. I think he's going to be pretty close, though. Uh, another guy I'm looking at on Smell's team, uh, Craig Kimbrell, big reliever, obviously, longtime reliever. I believe Alvarado got hurt, so he's going to be probably closing a lot of games. Um, until Alvarado comes back, which I'm not sure when it is. So that could be sort of a guy. Maybe he could have a huge week, couple of saves in there. Could be the difference maker if Smell is able to, to pull off the win. Um, two more matchups to cover before we wrap things up. We got Homco versus Scott. So the Cannonballers versus the Flying Squirrels. Bracton, you can go first. Um, I think that the batting will be pretty similar. As far as I think Fantrax is projecting Homco to outscore Scott's bats by 30. And then um, I think that the, the difference will be the pitching and that Homco has fa- more favorable pitching. So I think Homco is going to win by probably 100 to 150 points here over Scott. But the batting will be close, I think. And Cody, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I think these are two teams going in different directions. Uh, I think I think Homko, uh, you know, I th- he's going to realize how good those bats are. He has an initiative to win right now. Uh, I think he's jockeying for a playoff spot, and I think Scott's more focused on the future, and rightfully so. There's nothing wrong in that. Um, but I, I, I'm going to go advantage Cannonballers. Um, I think Homko in the low 600s is about where he's going to be. As it can kind of move forward, I don't think the flying squirrels can get to 600 points. Uh, so, so I'm going to give the advantage to Homco. Um, I think he wins uh, probably pretty easily this week. Yeah, I was thinking about this one. Uh, there's a guy on Homco's team, Louis Varland, Louis Varland. Louis. Give me Louis Varland and the Cannonballers. Um, again, I love Scott. Some of the guys on Scott's team. Francisco Alvarez and Casas are a great two punch for the future, <clears throat> but after seeing Homco's bats in full force, um, they're, they're not going to be messing around. Again, a team you will not want to play in the playoffs. 
if he's able to squeak in um, and potentially get a higher seed throughout the rest of the season. So I'll take Comco by 150 over Scott. But I think it'll be pretty high scoring between these two teams. And, and I think the last matchup we have is Connor versus Chad. So Amarillo Sod Poodles versus Oklahoma City Dodgers. Cody, you can go first. <coughs> Yeah, this, this is this is honestly a uh, interesting matchup itself. Uh, both these teams, uh, let's see, the Sod Poodles are one in five, and Chad's one in five. Um, I think Chad. I think the difference in this matchup is just going to be that that Chad is really focused on the future. i really focused on you know having the right draft picks bringing in some nice prospects, flipping some guys around, where I think uh, Connor's always just looking to get his team better. Uh, Whatever that means for Connor, that's what he's going to do. And so I think that's going to be the difference in this matchup. Um, I think it's going to be relatively close. I don't think either one of these teams has the pitching to run away with a matchup. Uh, But I think think Connor's going to win in a nail-biter. Yeah, I think for this one, uh, Chad has been really keeping things close a lot of games this year. Um, a couple off weeks, but when when his team is doing well, been kind of sneaky good in that 500. Maybe he can hit that 600 range if he gets a couple of good quality starts this week. But I'm going to win Connor for this one. Another guy, um, there's been a couple weeks he's really popped off. Um, hasn't got a ton of wins to show for it. Um, he makes a lot of trades. So I'm interested to see how some of these newer guys do on his team and also some of the arms. Um, I'm, I'm looking at it. Um, obviously, some question marks here and there, but I think his bats could help him get the win uh, for week number seven. So that wraps up our analysis for the previews for week number seven. Should be a fun week. So we're at the end. Uh, we'll let the commission go first. What are your final thoughts? Yeah, so so I'm going to use my time here uh, to talk about a pretty cool something I've seen uh uh, just a little bit ago, the Colorado Rockies just announced that they've selected the contract of Riley Pent. They've called him up to the major leagues. Um, guy's got a really interesting journey, man. He was the fourth overall pick by the Colorado Rockies in 2016, and uh, he struggled bad early. Uh, no control, um, you know, couldn't get anybody out. Uh, had a couple of the kind of the mental problems uh saw some psychiatrists and some therapists try to work through it couldn't couldn't get results better in the low minors he actually retired from baseball in 2019 um and he was retired through the pandemic and he come back in 2021 as a reliever and uh you know he's pitched well in 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 a ball and double a as a reliever and then he got up to triple a this year in the pcl which is a major hitters league and he's got a high ERA, but the Rockies thought he was ready, and he got called up tonight. And I just think that's a super cool story uh, for a guy that had a high pedigree, fourth overall pick in the draft out of high school, uh, comes in and struggles, struggles so much he actually retires from baseball, uh, comes back, grinds, and uh, finds his way to the big leagues. So I, I know he's elated right now. His family's elated right now. So I just wanted to mention him in my last words. Definitely a pretty cool story. I'm glad you were able to share it with all of us. Bracton, what are your last thoughts? Yeah, I uh, I wanted to comment on the um, Chad and um, Connor matchup. I didn't I didn't get one I, the chance to do that, so I'm going to do it real quick. Um, oh, oh, my bad. No, my no, bad. You're, you're good. Um, I do think that Connor's going to win, and it's going to be close. That's all I was going to say anyway. So it's all cl- it's all good. But um, for my my last word here. Go Cincinnati Reds, man. I'm going to be watching this closely. I've got nothing to do this week. I'm going to take some time uh, after getting home from school here and just relax and enjoy some baseball. And uh, I definitely want to watch the Matt McClain debut, and I I am going to be heavily anticipating a Ellie De La Cruz debut in the near future. And I, uh, I definitely think we know who our cover of our podcast is going to be for this week. That's all I'm going to say. Yep. Yeah, I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to figure that one out. But uh, my final words, I'm excited for the week ahead. Um, I know I've said it a couple of times, but really excited to play against Bry finally. Um, One of those matchups I've been circled on my calendar for a while. 
Um, again, interesting to see some of the matchups between us two in terms of what players we got going. But should be a fun week. Tita versus Hen should be chaos. I am all here for it. Bracton versus Jamie, I think, should be chaotic, especially in the beginning. Should be fun. Even Connor versus uh, Chad, another one I'm really looking at, should be a lot of fun. But that'll do it for this week's podcast for the Base on Balls podcast. Uh, be sure to stay tuned next week for week number seven's analysis and our preview for week eight. So for now, take care and have a great rest of your day.